the live button. You did? You got the live button pushed? I had the live button pushed. Hey, look at that. It says we're live. We're live? Then can I put the colors away? Uh, yeah, put the colors okay, away. This is how we balance our camera. Oh, you can do that, yeah. I mean, you can watch. Oh, here you did go. You, did you remember to balance the camera? Yeah. I bet. Yeah, I did that. Okay. Well, just that's why I'm what putting these away I now. Did you this? Yeah, yep. <laughs> putting this away. And I'm ready to start my landscape. <clears throat> so this is uh, one of the paintings uh, that... Uh, Nine um, by twelve. It's a nine by twelve, and it's not a tutorial. You just happen to be joining me in my studio for a um, exciting adventure of a fly on the wall. A fly on the wall, right? And nobody's here. Well, that's all right. Uh oh, now we got six. All of a sudden, they showed up. Somebody might show up, right? You know what's that? You remember that uh, that old joke about the. There was a man in the insane asylum in the, back in the days when they called them that, and um, uh, he would refuse to wear clothes. No matter what, he would he absolutely insisted on just wearing, but he wore this top hat. And uh, so anyhow, the, finally the, 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 the doctors were very interested in what the deal was with the hat because it wasn't gonna wear clothes. And I said, well, we don't understand why you're not, why you don't wear any clothes. And he said, well, why on earth would I ever wear clothes? Nobody ever comes. And they said, well, then why are you wearing this hat? And, he got, and his comment was, well, somebody might come. You see? And this is kind of like this, right? We're just, uh, no, nobody ever comes. We're just in the afternoon, but somebody might come. Yeah. So there you go, right? And, um, what else can you, what, what are you gonna do, right? Uh, uh, I mean, I, I just think that's a, that's a very funny story, but it kind of, it's applicable. You, you know, like for instance, if you don't, if you, if you feel like you need company and you haven't seen anybody for a while, don't make the bed, someone will show up. <laughs> it's really, it just never fails. Just don't make that bed and honestly watch who shows up in your little life, right? Come so in, Come in out of the woodwork. Yeah, I mean, and just, you know, people, oh, hi, uh, I saw your car, I thought I'd drop by. Oh, <laughs> you, know, don't, you know, don't do the dishes, don't make the bed, don't, don't do one of those things. And um, you'll, you'll see how fast, you know, things change. So anyway, I think that's kind of a, you know, kind of a true, even fun story, yeah? Indeed it is. You know, because I think that's what happens. So uh, I'm going to just do something here. For those of you who are just joining us, these are what we call fly in the walls. I'm up here in the studio. I have a lot of paintings to do this month for people who have signed up uh, for annual memberships in our academy. And anywhere from a, uh, the red and purple members, anywhere from a year to three years, and everybody that did that gets is, was promised an original painting, non-tutorial. But I got to paint them anyway, so we felt like you could be a fly on the wall for that, and that would still work. Okay. So that's the thinking behind all that, and um, and I think it's good thinking, don't you? And uh, let's see, I'm now, you know, I like how I put everything away. And then I'm just always dumbfounded where I might have done it. I've got one drawer for certain colors, and gosh, wouldn't you think they'd be in there? No. 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 no well, mm -mm. doesn't matter. Um, I'll make do. Oh, gosh. I'll make do. Now, that's my Stay Wet palette. That's had lots of um, uh colors in it and we spray it and the paint lasts forever so that's our there it is that's our i've got kind of a nine by twelve canvas and um that's not, for a soft brush i still like the ruby satin silvers for a soft brush you know the you just need a soft you know brush that covers i still really like these you know, like the older ones those. yeah so I, I still like them for that they just don't um, you know, they're not ideal for everything, but they're not bad. Yeah. 
and I think that they're pretty good. So anyway, this is what these are. I've got some 9 by 12 landscapes. I've got a bunch of uh, 6 by 8 paintings to do. Um, these are about 40 to do. Yeah, about 40 different paintings to do. We're not going to mail them out, anything out in December, even the ones from the... Um, uh, Nothing's going out to that. Not, all, right? Unless somebody wants to, you know, has a special request, their painting is done, and they want to do expedited special assurance shipping. So I feel like it's kind of, it's hazardous to so, send anything out in... Um, um, during the holidays, and during the holidays, you just don't know if anything's going to get there anymore. Yeah, well, you don't, do you, John? You do not. just don't know in this day and age, do you? Well, you know, that's, I think it's better than, you know, when we had during COVID or something, when you could expect, any, you know, a lot of people bought stuff in COVID, so the post office and everybody was really busy. But just generally, in general, this has been my policy for years, is um, with the exception of, you know, like, for instance, our, our, you know, like our calendars and everything, if you're thinking about getting one, I order early just to make sure you have it. But uh, they make great Christmas gifts, and we've got all those marvelous things in our store. The the, the um um the particularly the little notebooks. And uh, right now they're all lined, but I am coming up with some that are not lined. We just haven't had a chance to do it. And you know, I've been sick for the last week, and um, that has sort of limited um, kind of what I do. Uh, uh, overdo you. Well, yeah, and it's easy to do, you know. Um, um, it's easy to do. So, anyhow, that's the genesis of that. So this is a little bit too much water on this paint very runny, but it's going to work just fine for what I want it to do. Normally, I wouldn't want it that liquidy. We sprayed them, and then kind of, I did it. I sort of overdid it. It's all right. Happens, right? Happens to the best of us. Yeah. Hmm. How can you lose a cable in this pigsty? happy with the response that, that people did and um, we've never done this before we've never you know we've you know when it, if you did an annual membership as opposed to a monthly so if you're $48 a month monthly for you know you know personal art coaching and the whole thing if you're at that level um, you're still, uh, you know, it's it, when you do annuals, you get uh, like two months free anyway. But we're offering, you know, we decided we would do that this year, as well as um, uh, uh, do the, um, you know, offer these paintings. And if you sign up, if the purple members they sign up for three years, if you sign up for three years, not only get these tremendous, even more discounts, but you get a nine by an eleven by. A 12 by 16 painting that you may have seen me do the wagon and some if I get I get I think of it I'll show these uh, later um, so right now I'm just doing my 
under paintings. And anyhow, there's a, there was a book I read some out here. There was a, a, um, a lady, she'd uh, forgotten her name, and she channeled um, an entity called Seth. And Seth apparently had lived thousands of years ago and could be reached psychically. So um, her husband was an artist, and she wanted to do something nice for him. So she, she was able to bring... Um, you know, according to her, she was able to bring in this um, for him for his birthday. She got a hold of um, Cezanne and, and and actually did a book about painting uh, from this channeling Cezanne. And you know, I know it all sounds like horse 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 bucky, but I bought the book anyway. I went to see what what you know what the, what the, what the old D guy had to say, right? And what was interesting to me, he, was, he said that the mistake um, people make in landscaping artists is they don't paint uh, grass vertical. And I'm going, well, you know what? Okay, I can see that. And uh, so that's what I learned out of the book. There may have been some other stuff. Oh, the one other thing, the other thing that was really interesting, when he said, if you'll notice that my still lifes, he says like apples and fruit and stuff like that, when he would do those, he said they were never totally still lives because um, what he did was he um, uh, he had one apple or something uh, that, that in real life, if, if it was sitting there, it would roll off the table. It was in such a position that, you know, it would roll. And I thought that was kind of cool. And I said, yeah, so um, I, I, and I, and it brought back some... Uh, memories, I don't know if you ever have memories like this, but um, it brought back some memories for me, for me anyway, about um, uh, this, um, uh, back when, uh, we, when I was a teenager, we had two homes. We, my parents had a house and my sister and I, uh, there was a house where my sister and I lived in the same property and there was, it was a carport that uh, connected us and we ate dinner with my parents once a week at their house. I know that sounds screwy. And then, um, and then, which was an absolute nightmare and misery, just eating with them was awful. And then, then, but you know, they had to show up at least once a week for that. And then, but mostly we just ate at our house. And we had this older uh, refrigerator. Some of you, and if you ever had one, John, had the round top to it. Remember those? Oh yeah, yeah. And the top was round. And I can remember sitting on this big chair. We had, Mother did put out couches in the, it was a kind of a, a shoebox shaped um, area that my sister and I had. It had a kitchen, small kitchen, and the sh part, as part of the shoebox shape. And then there was, a th th you know, four big oversized chairs and a small little tiny television back like they had in the 50s, 60s, 50s. And then, um, and then my room had been originally a horse stall, a box stall, my sister's, and then it kept on going and there were some horse stalls. So it was like, we'd, they bought the, the property, uh, Triple Creek Ranch. We'd bought that from, my mother had put a note on a, a Christmas card to some friends. She says, um, if you ever want to sell that marvelous property you've got out in the country, we're looking for some horse property. And they wrote back and said, we want to sell it. And anyway, we ended up getting it, which was, which, you know, uh, it was lovely, right, John? It was just absolutely lovely. And uh, we ended up getting that property. And, uh, and then they had to remodel it because it was all horse house. It was really cool. So a horse had a barn and had all these pastures. It was a great place. So anyway, back to the refrigerator. I remember sitting. She just, I, I, I like to tell these stories because she had this thing. She didn't want, if our friends came over, particularly, you know, we were starting, my sister was like three years older, teenagers, and you might be boyfriends. And she didn't want uh, anything that would, might look like impropriety. So she was very concerned about uh, how things looked, think. what the neighbors would think, how things looked, right? She was very concerned about how, how things looked. And so she, um, her deal was that she didn't want a couch because she, well, things happen on couches. You know, well, they do. You, you know not, it's, <laughs> they do, don't they, John? Absolutely. And uh, things happen in, on couches. And so she felt that couches were precarious 
Be not not conducive. So we have these big chairs, and I'm sitting in one of these. And these big chairs, you know, kind of overstuffed cord corduroy chairs, you know. And they're not easy to, um, they really are not easy to to get up for, quickly from. You can get up from them, and even at you know, 13, 14. And I still remember this because um, the um, there was this ham, and uh, the housekeeper had set it on the um, on the um, top of that refrigerator to sit. The, I don't cool or whatever. It was too big to go in the refrigerator. She had the plate up there and the whole ham, and I saw it start to slide. You know what I mean? It was very slow. It just it was almost in slow motion. I could see this thing starting to go off the, under the you know the floor, okay. And and to me it was so funny because I couldn't get to it in time. Between where where it was in the refrigerator, I just was very helpless. I knew it was going to fall, and there wasn't any you could sit out and there it went. And I think that's kind of the, you know the way you want to do the still life. But Cezanne says you want to suggest that this thing may fall. It isn't falling right this second, but it's going to fall any minute. And you're going to, you know, anyway, so that's the little secret about still lifes, if anybody cares. Uh, the one thing I figure that we can keep you entertained with is, you know, stories like this, you know, hope that is. Okay. So I'm going to just dry that because that's a good underpainting right there for these grasses. So you notice I'm, for the most part, not coughing, and I can attribute that solely to the fact that I'm now on antibiotics and actually went to see a doctor and got a steroid shot, and I just have to say how pleased I am that you know y'all talked me into going. We have medical insurance, so it was just I couldn't really tell you why we weren't, I wasn't going. Inconvenient. You know, it's just inconvenient. <laughs> you had to find somebody, and that's the thing. So Never any. Mind. Inconvenient. Yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah. We have better things to do. But anyway, we, I went and got the shots and all that stuff, and I feel so much better. Uh, it's just really marvelous how much better I feel. And... Uh, glad I went. So those of you, I had, you know, my good friend Judy, she wrote, very concerned that, that I was going to let this go and, you know, and, I, and I'm glad I didn't because, you know, um, that was a good thing I didn't. I'm very glad I didn't do that. Nipping in the bud. Yeah, we did. It feels, feels, you know, just, just almost in, instantly it was better. So funny. I think that brush is too rough. I feel like Goldilocks here. Let's see what we got. Let's do a, let's do one of these D brushes. Let's do this other one. That's a that's got this because that was just too rough. That's better. It just won't push very hard here. Anyhow, that was 
that was a fun uh, house with the, we had an intercom on our properties on Triple Creek Ranch and uh, it was like 10 acres, I think. Five of the acres were in, you know, brambly woods that really weren't usable. We had five that were out with horse pastures and stuff. And my, we had an intercom between the two houses and I could never, I was never allowed to call my mother on the intercom, ever. Uh, she could call us, but uh, if we wanted to see her, we got off our asses and we, we went and knocked on the door and went in or walked in. I don't know if we had a knock anymore, but we had to, you know what I mean? It was no, um, intercoms only went one way, according to my mom, and it was her way. And, <laughs> and then you couldn't just say, yeah. You just had to no. say yes. You had to say yeah. yes. Yeah, there's no yeah. You had to say yes. And she she had this thing about saying, you know, you saying you know, you know. So if she, so if she was talking to me, and I started to use that expression, trying you know. to explain what happened. I'd go, you know? You know, you know. And she'd, she'd oh, oh, just take her fingers like this, and she'd go, every time I said it, right in my face. So that tried to break me of that habit, because that, apparently that was one of her little pet peeves. Just very annoying to have the, um, have that. Kind of funny, actually, when you think about it. Uh, But I got, um, got a kick out of it. You know, the, there are things that, you know, your parents can be very helpful with stuff like that because those are, you know, habits you do. And I'm not sure that I still don't do it a little bit, but I'm, I'm usually aware of it when I do it. Okay, again, let's try a softer brush. Uh, see what happened to my towel? I threw it on the floor. So I love these little picker-up things. If I drop anything in the studio, and I was talking to a friend of mine. Who was that the other day? I was asking if they had one. Oh no, they said. Oh yeah, it was my friend. And, oh no, I'm still. I can still pick stuff up off the floor. Well, that's not the point. Of course you can. You know, we're not saying you can't. But the, what does that have to do with the you know price of tea in China and stuff? Of course you can pick stuff off, but, you know, um, uh, that's, that's not it, right? So, anyway, she doesn't have one. Maybe someday I'll get her one just to, um, just on GP. My newest thing, I'll have to show you when I get it done, is I found a really interesting thing on um, um, Amazon, and it's, uh, it holds, it'll hold paint or your makeup. And I'm thinking that, you know how I'm always looking for tubes of paint? This was only like, you know, $15 or something in it. It has, a, a, it's a two compartment deal. It's got Lazy Susan and it's real nice. Really like it. So I think it has potential. Um, So I, I, I've got it. I've got one for the makeup, and it's just saved hours of um, work on the makeup. You know, just you know, finding things, and everything's right there, uh, and right in front of my face on the counter. So, uh, um, so probably the handiest little caddy for just doing something neat. I've seen. Try this.
Yeah, watch out before I get into the right there, my lady. Okay. Yeah, you gotta tell me. This is like a typewriter. Yeah, uh, yeah. Remember those? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh man, I remember Mrs. Beacons, Mrs. Bake Beacons, Maven's Beacons, typing tutor. <coughs> I took typing in junior high, I think, but I went back and took one of these computer courses with it, and what that was marvelous. Um, really was. See, so there's the zinc, and um, it really just. Not that I'm a fast typist, but at least, you know, that was helpful. My friend and I both did that back in the early 90s. We, back when you could buy all these great programs for your computer that were fun like that. You could still do it, but, you know, I don't do it so much. It's really changed. Well, everything does change, doesn't it? I mean, things that, you know, the technology changes and... Um, just the other day, I was wanting to buy something on Amazon, or you know, buy something, and I, there's a there's a chat thing uh, called Claude, and you know it's free. You can Claude, you can sign up for that. And Claude is kind of like the Wizard of Oz. Claude knows all. Okay, so I was sitting there saying I wanted to, you know, some, something, some something I wanted, and. And he gave me, told him exactly what I wanted, and he gave me all the different brands. And, you know, so I looked them first up on Amazon, and then I, and then when I got to the review part, the thing that I noticed was a lot of people's big complaint, and I've noticed this before, their big complaint was that, um, um, that, uh, um, that sometimes people will buy stuff on Amazon, and it's somebody else's junk that's been returned. And, uh, you know, at least you see that in the reviews. And, um, you know, that's just such a put off, you know, for me. Um, you know, not that we're still not mad Amazon shoppers, because we are, but I, I'm not interested in, you know, getting used makeup or any of that stuff, right? So, um, anyhow, the. Um, uh, so then I, I wrote back, I said, well, to Claude, I said, listen, Claude, thank you for all that, but honestly, I'm having a real a, a faith issue in buying certain things on Amazon because of the reviews I'm reading about these products that it, you know that you mentioned, and then it, what Claude did was gave me all the other stores that uh, like Target and Walmart and all the other stores that had it and Macy's and you know big guarantees and all that stuff, and that was great. You know what I mean? Very that was handy. that was just nice. I mean. I didn't buy anything anyway, but you know, sometimes I just window but shopping. But if I wanted to buy something, I know now where to buy it. And now, that, for instance, um, I asked Claude what kind of, I told him about the year of making my battery and that we traveled a lot, or a lot of times we don't use the, well, it was less traveling, but because we got our groceries delivered, we don't really use my car that much. And John has a car, so a lot of times I have battery problems with it. And, uh, and so I asked about that, and um, uh, he told him exactly the model, make and model of the car, and he listed, uh, you know, about seven different batteries that would work very well with the car in the order of what we were trying to do, something that would last longer, and exactly what they should be. He told, you know, another time, <coughs> another time, I was asking him about, um, wanted to buy something for my, Bathroom. Want to replace the faucet on the shower head, and I, I, I know, I know. I saw where there was these words and the descriptions on when you're when you're looking to buy something. I said, "What does that even mean?" And he explained that that was how much water that was going to come out. And when we went to buy the, went to like Lowe's to buy the the, the new sh shower thing. Um, there were only like two models that had. Um, the kind of shower, the water output, the 2.5 that we wanted, everything else was, you know, 1.5 or something. And then that's something I never would have thought to look at before. Does that make sense? Never yeah. would have done that. Um, and uh, so um, I, I tell you what, technology is, it's like talking to the Wizard of Oz. Just say, what do you think? You don't have to take the advice, but it is advice, okay? And I even asked him about my cold. Um, 
GPT chat isn't allowed to tell you anything medical anymore. They haven't muzzled Claude yet. Um, <laughs> so I gave him the <laughs> symptoms of my cold, and he told me to go to the doctor and get this, and that's exactly what they prescribed, was what he'd said to get. So that in itself is interesting. Come on, don't you think that's sort of interesting, John? I think that's, that's interesting. interesting. You know, that in itself is sort of interesting. This... Um, um, so that's the um, that's the technology that that's the world we live in today with this tech days tech, tech days technology, is that we've got these different uh, scenarios where um, that that information is at your fingertips when you want to know something. It always was there. I mean, you, not that you couldn't have found that on the internet eventually. When I spent hours looking for stuff, you could certainly, you could find it. This just takes all the search time out, right? Speeds so, the process. Yeah, it just speeds the process up. And then, you know, I mean, you may not have to take the opinion, but it, um, it does make, to, to me, it does make a difference. Um, No sense in reinventing the wheel. Well, no, and then and then and then, for instance, yeah, and that's all the um, the technology, and then and Claude is is you know is pretty up to date as far as the stuff that he knows, or she knows, or whoever if you want to call her Claudia, she knows, she's pretty up to date with this stuff, and um, that's good too, right? So. Tell you what, this is this is fun for me. For just talking about You're putting in lights and darks. Hmm. I don't know if anybody's any questions on anybody's asking a question, John. Or are we just all kind of sitting here? No, it's not that kind of a thingy. No, but I, people write in questions anyway. I'm sure you're answering them. Um, it's not that kind of a thingy, but you know, don't want to be mean either. So anyway, I was just uh, I'm doing some personal art coaching today, and getting back. I just the longest I've been in getting back to anybody, but I've just sort of. Last week, we just sort of, I kind of lost a little bit last week, this last week with the, with the cold and stuff, but I'm um, feeling better now. Um, Think how much the world has changed from when we were kids. If you wanted something, you actually had to get in the car and go get it. <laughs> just. That just seems so wrong nowadays, doesn't it? Well, you know, when I lived in Aspen, we had Montgomery Awards and Sears catalog, and you couldn't just go get in the car. It was like eight hours to Denver back then. So when I lived, Cinnamon was a baby and I was living in Aspen, if I wanted anything, we just pretty much shopped out of the big book. And I remember we first bought the condo. We had, it was a three bedroom condo with a basement for like projects and art and everything. It's just nobody had anything like that at the time in the area. It was just such a wonderful find. And um, so anyway, we, um, um, uh, we used to look in the wish book, but we called it the wish book. 
And, uh, you know, a lot of people in those days, we had the Fuller Brush Man coming by, and he brought stuff, and then I always looked forward to his visit, and then we had the Montgomery Ward catalog. And um, what was kind of neat, what to me, what was very neat about the catalog was that there was, you know, you could just look through, and you, you had furniture and you know, all that stuff. So we bought this condo, and we, it, we, there was no way to just go get, I had a budget for furniture, so I took the, um, the catalog with us, and we went to with we rented out the two upstairs bedrooms. So we took one of our renters with us, who was uh, kind of a sock folder and good with mass. And we made a list of everything we needed for the condo. I mean, we just we bought the whole, you know we had to get beds and clocks and I mean all of that stuff, right? We we made a whole list of everything we needed for this condo. Okay. And so we get to Montgomery Ward. And we have a salesperson, and back in those days, they worked on commission. No, if they still oh, do, yeah, if there's, I those days. you know, they worked on commission, and you know that's fair. And um, <clears throat> so we had this list, and we had the book. So we're sitting there, and then we're talking. We found a salesperson, and um, we said, okay, so we need like, um, uh, you know, one one king size bed, and then we need um, a queen. And um, then we'll see. We needed two, 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 and then two twins, because we had this one big, one big bedroom upstairs that would have been a master that we were renting out to two guys, and that was the they were gonna, you know, they had two bedrooms in that one. And then we had um, this other one that we had a queen size bed in, and um, so. Uh, uh, that was okay. So then, so anyway, I fr I've forgotten what the guy's name was that went with us, but we, we had this list of stuff, you know, and we needed a clock. And this guy, we had one salesperson, and he kept running around. I mean, it's like he had struck gold because every punk, punk, punk comes in and buy a clock, and it comes by and buy a bed, and then we needed the bedspreads, and we needed the blankets, and then we needed um, all that stuff, right? And um, um, so, uh, uh, finally, I think it, and oh, what else? A washer and dryer, we had to get those. I got a washer and dryer. Um, trying to think what else we would have needed, you know, waste baskets. We weren't buying anything in Aspen because that's tourist town. You couldn't buy anything there, right? So we had like, um, we had like waste baskets that we had to buy, and it came to about $10,000 is what we ended up with with all this stuff, okay? Back then, that's quite a bit of money, don't you think, Sean, back then? Absolutely. You know? It's about ten thousand dollars, and um, he couldn't bring it up on his cash register. Why? <laughs> it didn't go that high or something. I don't know what the <laughs> deal was. He couldn't bring it up, and he was going nuts because he what well, didn't want us to lose. He didn't want to lose the sale, and this was all getting delivered. <laughs> Just, I mean, oh yeah, we had living room furniture. I mean, we bought all that too, right? The big fancy easy chair, and then. You know, table. I mean, we had a thing. We furnished the whole house down to the pots and pans. Everything. We furnished the whole house. Uh, Colby and I, had, you know, got married. That was our, you know, one of our wedding present funds. And uh, so we bought everything. And uh, I still remember the guy trying to figure out how to, how to ring all this up, because he was. A, we distressed him a lot. Okay. And uh, anyway, that was funny. So we had, <coughs> we had the. <coughs> we had, and then we did a little tiny, there was a little alcove upstairs in the hall, and we, we did a little tiny kitchen up there with a hot plate and a refrigerator, and you did dishes in the bathroom sink, so our renters weren't sharing our kitchen, which was the size of a bathroom, it was a little tiny condo, and so they, they could do that, and so they had, the, they shared that, and then, uh, and then, they had these girlfriends that had moved in with them, and that lasted for about, uh, I don't know, two weeks maybe. And then they got mad, and so then they kicked them out. And then these girls had nowhere to go, okay? Because bless their little boys' hearts, they, you know how boys can be. They just said, I'm sorry, you're not my thing anymore, get out. So we ended up uh, buying some cots and putting them in the basement. So we rented out. Two, <laughs> two cots for the leftover girlfriends that uh, had been replaced with others. And uh, 
that were in the base, and they stayed in the basement. And one of those girls, her name was Mimi Darley. And she was from England, and I think she was an inherit, inherited a large fortune in, um, I don't know, Guinness beer or something, something like that. Of course, she could have been lying too, but you know, I, I had no reason not to. That's a very na naive person. And um, Mimi was a kleptomaniac. Uh, and, and who knew, right? So, um, anyhow, M Mimi um, was, st I kept missing things. You know, it was the strangest thing. I would just look around, I'd ski gloves and, you know, watches and stuff. And we had another girl that was living there too. Her name was Sugar Fru. Sugar Fru? Sugar Fru. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, great that names, right? Name? Yeah, that was her name, Sugar. Her sisters were all like candy or something, and of course she loved the fact that my name was Ginger, so it, got, so it didn't feel like the odd one out, right? But the, so yeah, that was her Sugar Fruit, and she, sugar fruit. she was from, um, oh, where's she from? She was in the Midwest somewhere, but she, her big thing was Dr. Pepper, um, sodas, which I'd never heard of coming from Seattle. I didn't drink sodas anyway, but she was such a fan of this, of Dr. Pepper. Sodas, just, um, I don't know if that's just sort of, sort of, sort of funny. Well, that was her thing, was Dr. Pepper sodas. And anyway, she's the one that caught, uh, Sugar Fruit uh, was the one that caught Mimi stealing. Uh, Mimi just stole from all of us. Nice gal, too. I really quite liked her. She was fun, but, you know, she just couldn't seem to, could, she'd had this problem her whole life, uh, been kicked out of boarding school for it, um, you know. That's not the kind of thing people put on their resume when they move in and rent a place from you. And we're all sharing the, you know, uh, you know, the house, and so you know, this was very inconvenient to have her um, be, uh, you know, ripping us off like that. Uh, just saying that wasn't um, uh, could have could have done without that. Yes and yes, okay. but. Um, oh. Anyway, I got a good old uh, sugar cotter, and and um, we didn't we didn't ask her to leave. We just asked her to stop. You know, just please don't do it. You know, if you've got to do it, you know, go rob the bank down the street, but don't don't rob us, please. It's just not nice. And just whatever you're doing, stop that. And then um, she did. Um, I don't know. I think. It was just interesting because she had money. She didn't need to steal from us. But people that do that, oftentimes, it isn't about the money. It's just, this is nice. I think I'll keep it. And she had all this stuff hidden in her room that uh, she'd swiped. That's just weird. Well, John, it was weird. You know, no question about it. It was weird. And um, uh, we could have done without, with, again, could have done without someone doing that, but, um, you know, she did, so. And like I say, I wish she hadn't. Let's see what else. So that was the thing. So, and Mimi had been the girl, one of the girlfriends that had gotten displaced. Uh, probably stole from him, too. I don't know. So the boys, boys lived there for a while, and then we finally ended up with this one couple from... Um, that was had moved in, and she, she, they were, they were. So I was like 19 at the time. I think 18. I think is when I got married to, to to Colby. It was like 18, and you know, and these kids were older. They were in their, you know, college, <coughs> older. <coughs> and this one girl, I remember her. She, they shared the 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 queen size bed upstairs. And um, so their their bed squeaked. Um, if they were having any kind of romantic relations upstairs, their bed squeaked like crazy. And then our there was soundproofing wasn't that good. And um, you know, I mean, Colby and I would if we would even so much as have an argument, we'd go out in the car, drive around. We never let anybody ever hear an argument or anything like that. And the idea that the soundproofing from bedrooms could get to other people is just mortifying. You understand that. But on our honeymoon, I would not hold his hands in public for fear people might think we were having sex. I don't know. I mean, probably 18 was think was too young to get married. So the guys that these are getting it on in the upstairs bedroom, and she was moaning and groaning, and this would last for out, you know, like 30 minutes. And I'm thinking she's faking, she's faking the whole thing, 
um, you know, she just annoyed me, right? <laughs> just, I'm like, she's faking her. I'm married to Dud. <laughs> I don't know what it is, right? But I chose to think that she was faking. And um, uh, anyhow, th th this went on and on and on. And it, it was almost to the point where we were just started to laugh. We could hear them. And it was funny. We'd start to laugh. And um, which isn't nice, but, you know, it got to be funny. And then I'd look at her kind of, you know, and then I'm thinking, well, maybe she just doesn't realize we can hear them. So I said, we got to let them know that we can hear them, that they, that, you know, because their bed, you know, my neighbor in the condo next door came over and said, you know, do you hear those guys? <laughs> you know, I said, yeah, we hear them, but we just, um, you know, from somebody that doesn't want to hold hands at the beach, you can imagine I didn't want to have this conversation with either one of them about the, I mean, I, I, I kind of, I wanted her to, you know, clean the kitchen up and the bathroom up a little bit better when she was upstairs and I got kind of told off about that and it was my house and so I couldn't imagine how I was going to tell her not to, you know, be so vocal, I guess. I don't know what, my, I don't know, just do it when we weren't home or something, right? But anyway, um, or that maybe she just didn't realize that, that the soundproofing in this new condo wasn't the thing. So... Anyway, so our solution to this was that finally, you guys are going to laugh. It's just, I know it's crazy. So our solution was to, um, uh, 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 we, got on, we got on the bed and we found one corner of our king size bed that, that squeaked. If you, if you kind of jumped around on our bed, it, you, we could make it squeak in one corner. So we took turns. Um, bouncing up and down on our, with our butts on the bed, bouncing you know, up the, and making noise and moaning. Oh, 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 you know? And <laughs> just, I mean, carried on, right? And laughing, we were laughing. We didn't even drink, and we were laughing ourselves silly because, of course, it was crazy. It was a crazy thing to do, yeah? And um, anyway, um, I don't know if she, she thought it was that funny, but... Um, I think we got our point across because uh, <coughs> they stopped. We didn't hear them anymore. And that was all we were trying to do was just sort of spare ourselves a little bit. And uh, that it was never brought up. Never There's, discussed in public. No, well, you know. Listen, my, my mother, her whole thing was what would the neighbors think. And, um, yeah. That's, you know, that's... Um, uh, those are the kinds of things that you remember back, back, and you know, back in the day, right? Back in the day. Back in the day. Back in the day. Uh, this. I may have to put some more paint out or get one of the others, but... Does this video need a PG-13 rating? Probably. What? Our video. Do you think so? Well, conversation's going on today. Well, maybe so. I wasn't subtle enough. <laughs> painting grass like this and all these colors. You're not using a furry brush. Huh? You usually use a furry brush. Yeah, I just got this one here. This, this one I may come back with the furry one for some of this. I'm just laying in some just laying in some some peak colors now. There we go. Oh. 
All right, probably good a time to dry that. I take it you gave me all my brushes back, right? From the yep, they're in your drawer. Okay. Just asking. You can you can see that. Oh, absolutely. I would hope you would. Did you ever hear back from those brush people? They gave us the brushes. Did you ever write them back? No. Do you write them? And tell them. I told them, but last time I wrote them, I said, you know, we're back, and I in and told her what we were going to do. She goes, okay, what's your channel? What, you know, do you have a YouTube channel? I wrote her that, and I haven't heard back from her. Well, why did they, I was, you know what? I don't we, know. We're not doing anything. We're not doing anything with them, because they I wrote us, because we have a YouTube channel, and, and yeah. suddenly they forgot that we have a YouTube channel. That's just, that's just, um, yeah. you know um, what? They can pound sand. Ooh. With their new brushes, there was a company that approached us, and they've got these little detail brushes. They sent us some, and they wanted us to do a thing on it. And then they had all these rules on how to do it, and then what you had to say. And look, and I don't want to promote anybody's brushes and tell you to buy something if I don't like them, right? And I didn't know if I would like them. Yeah. So um, uh, that that to me isn't clever. So um, anyhow. Uh, We tried them. We we tried them. We went and bought some. They're no they're mo no more expensive than the brushes that no, they're more expensive than the brushes we, that we had already that, that we normally use. And I was hopeful because they're really more watercolor brushes. And they just they were, yeah. they would work for si like like the Salvador paints. But <clears throat> you get those kind of brushes in the Salvador paint kit. You know, if you buy the kit, I didn't see they were any better than those, right? Well, they're a finer point. A little finer point, but not. It's good for a soft body or a medium body, but not for a heavy body. But not for what we're what well, not for we what we do. But they, and I don't want to sit there and have somebody send me something free and then, and then and then not be able to give you my honest opinion on what I think about it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does to me. So we're just not going to do that anymore. So if he wants to give us something, fine, but don't expect anything from us. Yeah, that's. Um, I just didn't want to. Just didn't want to have any more of these kind of. Uh, stresses in our lives, you know, because to me that's just an additional stress. You know, now I got to do something about this. And um, I already create a lot of stress for myself when I do projects like this. <laughs> I just say, sure, we'll just do all, you know, all these original paintings. All you have to do is sign up and we're, we're, we're good to go, you know, which we are. Uh, and absolutely are good to go, but still. Um, I'd rather be doing this with you guys. You know what I mean? Exactly. Then, um, then um, uh, worrying about stuff like that. Okay. So, just check these clouds again one more time before I get too carried away. Uh, make sure they show up.
All righty. Um, one thing about the Bristol on brushes, if you do it, you, you can get a little bit tighter um, tree and stuff. You know, you can get high, tighter lines. Uh, let's see. Call out a burnt sienna. You know, you're talking about, John, you're talking about paint things, you know, um, tubes and caps and how that paint on this. The, uh, you know, the squeezable uh, bags are nice, you know what I mean? Because you can get the paint out and you just, you know, put the thing back on, right? That makes sense. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The squeeze up thing, and Holbein has that, but they, but they don't sell a lot of that stuff in the United States. That's the thing about Holbein is they have it, but they, um, you're not really seeing it in the United States. As you know, they, you can get a few things like their gessos are kind of come in that, and um, but you know, the, other than that, you're not. Not quite the same. No, so, you know, but I think that's, I think it could be improved on. You know, the paint tube, for those of you who are not aware of it, the, up, up until the 1800s, artists uh, were having to be stuck using pig bladders that they uh, would fill with like little pockets and they'd fill them with paint and then they'd sew them up and then they'd poke a hole in them and squeeze it out and sew that back up again. It sounds horrible, doesn't it? And, um, but it worked. But that's what they did. And they didn't paint outside because pig bladders didn't travel. You know, have pig bladder, pig bladder will travel, which is not the case, right? Okay, there's no such thing as I have a pig bladder, it travels, because it doesn't. So anyhow, the paint tube was invented to right around the time of the Civil War for watercolor. And um, the, um, it, it quickly caught on, and um, uh, for instance, Van Gogh would, was, was able to buy his paint, in, and Renoir and the Impressionists were able to buy their paint in tubes, which allowed them to travel outside, and, uh, which is a good thing. And so Van Gogh, uh, um, uh, uh, his paint dealer was an ex-pirate, Pirates of the Caribbean pirate, like Johnny Depp, he was a retired pirate, his paint dealer. And um, he got riffed off a little bit some of the time, but he could not afford the really good paint. So uh, there's like the, I may have told this story, but some of you may not have heard it. There's some uh, flowers, uh, white flowers in the museum there in, in London that uh, are, uh, actually were red flowers, but he couldn't afford the good red. And then there was another artist that um, was famous Dutch artist, I've forgotten his name, and he felt that if your colors, the colors were so unstable that if you got a month out of your painting, anything after that, it was too bad if anything happened to it. You got what you got. <laughs> and then at one point, the uh, no one, everybody kept their paint recipes secret, like cooks, you know. And um, so the, the the people went, people went and studied under other masters, be, just for their, you know, it's like you go st study under a particular chef because they have the, um, um, the cooking recipes. They have the recipes for the paints and the colors. For instance, if you have the, you know, there are only one guy in the world that knows how to make luminous rose and he lives in Japan. And, and um, 
You know, today you just order a tube of paint, but that went that back then you might have to go apprentice under him to get the recipe, and he might not give it to you for two or three years, right? While you cleaned his brushes and mopped the studio up, right? So they were very guarded about all their stuff, and um, so the uh, the upshot of it was is that. Uh, um, uh, um, they had this problem with varnish in England and um, the, no one could remember how they made it. The guy that made the varnish died and he never passed the recipe on to anybody else. And the people were worried that the... Um, um, the, 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 well, the varnish was starting, the paintings were turning black in the museums as they were turning black because, again, nobody could remember how they made this. And, um, yeah, not good, right? And even at the time of like Michelangelo and those guys and Leonardo da Vinci, they had to, you know, mix their own paints and out of the, the, the ingredients. And um, um, their uh, um, for some colors, to make the colors came from so far away like um, uh, like some colors came of, came from as far away as Afghanistan. Like ultramarine blue came from Afghanistan, and uh, it, you know it took a lo it took months to get it. It's only it's still the lapis. It's made out of lapis lazo, and the lapis that still comes from Afghanistan, by the way. And they, now they found a place in South America somewhere that makes it around Panama. But up until until till then. Um, you know, you're talking about um, uh, paint coming from really a long ways away, and uh, and and it was hard to get. And there was one, uh, and the Virgin Mary could only be painted that color. Apparently, they had she had to wear that particular, you know, have that color blue. They had a church had all these regulations about what they wanted with their, and they, of course they they were the main um, people. That Catholic Church was the main, probably the main. Uh, and nobles, of course, but the main people that were ordering paintings. And um, so, uh, anyway, the upshot of it was is that um, uh, paints were, you know, you go to the paint store today and you have such a variety of paints you can get. And it's wonderful, isn't it? It's amazing. And it's amazing. And darn convenient. Yes. But you couldn't get that then, and um, okay. So just get this a little bit closer. All right. So, uh, I know what I was looking for. Okay. This, I think I've got enough light around in here. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't. All right. So, talking to you and stuff, and I have to just kind of concentrate. You, boss. What? You're not getting confused, are you? Try not to be confused, John. Definitely working on not not getting confused. Just putting in the layers of contrast.
Okay. All right, I think that's going to work. What time is it getting to be? Uh, 1.43. So I didn't quite get this done in time for you, right? Well, not quite. Sorry, just the way it is. <laughs> well, we can take, what, an hour break and come back? Or is your thing an hour, or what is it? I have no idea. How many times do I have to tell you I don't know? Lots, because I forget. Five. Well, I think I've told you six so far. So you oh. owe me one. Got no idea, babe. Not a clue. Not a clue. Well, if you want, we can just uh, we'll pause here when you need to do your thing, and we'll come back and finish it. I'll go do some personal art coaching and come back and work on this a little bit if you want. So you let me know when you've got to do your thing. Okay. And I'll do that. I kind of thought I could do this in an hour, but enjoy, I'm just enjoying the process. How's that? Uh Just leave the brushes where they are and don't know how we got yellow on that. It's all right, it doesn't matter. I could just keep painting and um, just pick this up when you're off and I'll just keep going with it. You could do that too. What was your last comment? So I, could just, I could just keep painting too. Oh, you could, yeah. You, know, you, you can just, do whatever you want. Yeah. Because I've got too many of these to get done, but then I still need to do some art coaching. So, you know, that's so you're all right torn, too. you aren't you? 
I'm torn. I'm right in the middle of this. I'm sort of in the zone. That, you know, as they, well, my friend know, Kathy want, Schuster used to say. Zone. No, I know it's like to be in the zone. You know. I've been in the zone. Yeah, so you know what I'm saying. I'm kind of in the. I understand what you're saying. The zone and. Um, I am one with the universe on that.
So you want to keep painting? About five minutes. It's yeah, I think fun. I'll, I just, I'll, just, on. I'll just keep painting. Oh, I'm almost done. I'm just going to keep painting. Tara would, like, Tara would like to say a comment to you. Okay. Those daisies are hard to do, Ginger. I may be mad at you, LOL. <laughs> I think they can be, the daisies can be hard, absolutely. Well, we I, figured they were good for you to try. You know, but you know, just because, because, well, the lady, I mean, if you try her apples, those one, that, those, we're talking about Eloise Harriet there, and, and if you, she's got some apples that, you know, I mean, the, you can see the bruises and the, and the, and the, the little where animal creatures have, have, have been sampling the apples when no one's looking. Um, I don't know, you know, have you seen all that, right? I mean, and she's got, uh, she was a marvelous artist. I just thought her paintings got a little cluttered, but, but she was really an absolutely terrific artist. Um, and, 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 you know, and, English artists, and again, women just didn't get the kudos that men did in those days, in the 1800s. I don't understand. They just didn't get it. Which is interesting to me in itself, I mean, because they just, they didn't get it, and One thing I'm sure glad I did was get those ter these Terry Harrison grass brushes from England. Those are great. Speaking of England. So John's gonna John's gonna go listen to the seminar he's been promised, and so if there's any final questions, I guess you better ask him now, because otherwise he won't read them to me, and I don't see the chat. I'll see it after. And if you have something you really want to know, you can always use the contact us. If you want to know how to get personal art coaching or uh, find out how your, um, you know, how you can expand your art journey. A little bit. They're happy to show you that. And And I can just I love having all these brushes. I can decide which one, like Goldilocks, I need to do which particular thing.
What? What's interesting? He's mumbling to himself over there. I guess I'm not know what's interesting until I, after he's done. Don't flatten out your brushes. You end up with blobs of paint that you didn't really want. It's just not never a good thing. Number here on the bottom. What happened? They did a little ad in the beginning. She muted herself and she hasn't unmuted. Everybody's telling her. Okay. Still want to watch it?
make a little, can you have a frame for me? Maybe not. Maybe you don't get a frame today. John's on the internet. Doing something else. Dropped all my picky up stuff and my brushes. This is where I just sort of have to focus and can't chat much. 
when I'm doing stuff like this. Some new zinc white out. Just turn it upside down here.
Well, I'm about wrapping this up. I was about done. Um, this tree is a little bit higher. Acrylics dry darker, so you know you think you have all your lights in there, and you go back and you see where you didn't quite. Had red light.
John, do you have a frame? I'll have to go get one. Okay, I'm gonna go look for my little frame for this. I'll show you guys and I'll finish it up while it's in a frame so I can kind of isolate all the visual noise from here and go find one. Are you leaving for good? What are you doing? No, I need my frame. You what? I need a picture frame. Where are they? 10 oh. by 12, 9 by 12, so over here, right? This gold one. You got it? I have this black one would be pretty this gold. I don't know which one. One of these two, right? These are nine by twelve. Yeah. Okay. How's your seminar? Oh shit! Shit, I just about broke my neck. Oh my my foot just is killing me. I just stub my toe and my foot hurts. Well, oh, this is because I am in stocking feet and I slipped on the mat, but my foot is better now, but I am not a big fan of knocking one's foot into the table. Let me get some tub of towels and clean my hands too. Fall is probably one of my favorite times of year to paint um, because it, there's just beautiful golds and it's just what, what my, my adopted mother, who's an artist, called it, you know, when you're doing neutral colors. Wow, huh? And I like to I like to sign it after I'm in a frame because I can decide exactly where I want to put my signature. And this time I'll do it in brown. And um, again, I've got my uh, I, I've got I can put my finishing details on it now that I see it a little better than I had it before. Just sometimes it helps me to just have it in perspective of what I want. Bring something up like this up a little higher. The front there. Something like that. And this is a little bit denser than I. There you go, like that. There, okay, like, like that. You can just see a few little things that. Again, paints dry darker. So what happens is, is that you may think you've, you've got it. You may well have, but then you may not. So this is why I like to, I'm getting nowhere with this brush. Just want the tip. Like that, there we go. Oh, 
Just, you know, just play it a little bit, but I like it better. All right, so I'm going to take a, one of these new brown pens. Let me dry this real quick, but I'm, I'm liking how it looks in the frame, and I like that we've got the distance, and I've got all these, um, you know, I've got some real depth in the, um, in the picture now. And the zinc white really made a difference. I know I'm just uh, pushing stuff back with those trees. Probably should have used this pen to begin with. And the same thing here. Yeah, I can, I'm doing it in brown because um, if I don't like that, I gotta take it off right away. If I don't like it, that's the one of those, these pens, you gotta go instant. Before I found pens and I was painting it with a brush, I would, sometimes I'd s sign my name, honestly, I kid you not, like 10 times. Uh, <laughs> I just, I'm gonna, the other trick is to do it in white. And then what you do is you glaze it back rather than, you know, if you can't get it to show up, you just do it in white first. Be kind of careful how you write the name too. You can, uh, don't get the zeros right. That looks like a totally different word. So, <laughs> just. Now that's, that, that's a little bright. So. Generally with um, something like this, you can take a little tiny bit of, of glazing medium. Uh, it doesn't, um, doesn't uh, you know, it doesn't keep, you know, you just, if you put it out there, it's gone, it dries in like 20 minutes or something. So I just want a little bit of glazing medium and a little bit of color, I think, um, color should I do that? Probably. Let's do blue. I know that sounds funny, but I think I'm thinking blue. Just, just enough to just, I could do water, but I, um, so just tone that back just a bit. It's not so white. If I didn't like that, I could do brown, but I, I still want my signature to show up. I always put the red slash through it. There we go, like that. And Let's do a couple more things. There we go. So there we go, John. This is nine by twelve, and it's um, uh, put a few of these little leaves on the water, like that from the thing. And there we go. This is one of the nine by twelves for the people that uh, signed up for our uh, annual membership. Uh, uh, thing that we're doing in uh, the academy f uh, in November and December where we told people would get a free 
uh, painting, depending on the size, would depend on their membership level, how many years they signed up for. There we go. So this was uh, Midwest uh, Landscape in the fall. And I hope you guys had fun uh, hanging out with me. It's flying on the wall, fly on the wall. And I just, um, I'm, I'm very pleased with how this came out. And I hope you guys had fun watching too. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, you guys. I know you would, but just just in case you forgot. <laughs>